Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I wanted to give you a quick little demo on the 15 new presets that I have for Lightroom, five of which you can get for free over on the blog. I'll place the link in the description. You can download them, check them out, start rocking them on your own food photographs. Now, these come as part of a larger 15 pack which is part of my new Lightroom for Food Photographers course. And you can download that on the blog. I'll place that link in the description as well. It's a great course for anyone who's just starting out in Lightroom or maybe wants to brush up on their skills and really master the program. It's got full-on shoots here in the studio. Pretty much my entire workflow from A to Z, from importing all the way to exporting and everything in between. So it's gonna be a great course and I really think you're gonna love it. But for now, in this video, let's see what these presets can do. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and say that these presets are gonna fix all of your editing woes with one click. It's not, it's not like that. They're really great for starting or giving you a huge jump or leap ahead in that editing process. And oftentimes I find that a lot of my photos is just one click and I'm ready to post on Instagram or, or Facebook or my Pinterest account. But I really created these presets to help out and, and be solutions for a lot of typical problems, whether it's underexposure or overexposure, or maybe the camera just couldn't capture the depth and the color of the food, whether it be a steak or a salad. So with one click, you can really bring a lot of that back. But a single preset isn't great for every single image. So I wanna do a little screen share with you today and just show you the type of images that I would use these presets on and just a little bit more about what they can do. All right, so I've opened up Lightroom here. My presets are already in my develop module, but to get those into Lightroom is super easy. Just go up to the Lightroom, then preferences, tab over to the presets here and click on the show Lightroom presets folder. Then click on the develop presets folder and copy and paste the folder you downloaded from We Eat Together. Then you can just restart Lightroom. Go back to the develop module and you'll see my presets under your presets tab over on the left here. So real quick, these are the personal presets that I use in my workflow. I don't use them on every single image, but oftentimes I'm shooting under the same lighting conditions. So I really know how they will work. Like if I'm shooting salads, I know that the Insulata preset, which is part of the free five pack, makes all those salad colors just pop, those greens and those reds. If you notice for the most part, I've named my presets after particular types of food because I, I've geared them to pick up on those specific types of colors. For example, if I'm shooting cookies on a white background, that the milk and cookies preset will bring that warmth back to the dough. Now you don't have to stick to the names on the presets. They'll work on a ton of photos. First three presets here are to correct exposure issues. The first one here is the cloudy day preset. This one works really well in situations where you might be shooting bright plates on a bright background, like this breakfast spread on a white tablecloth. It was a little overcooked in some of the highlights, so the cloudy day preset really just brings that exposure back a bit. You can see that the cream in this small bowl was you know, way out, but with this preset, it comes back in. The white curtain preset is similar, but not as drastic. It's great for images where you might just want to bring the exposure down just a tad and pump back in a little contrast and color. Say in images where a white background washed things out. The baked preset is the opposite, brightening those slightly underexposed images like this pesto shot, making those colors and highlights pop. But you see, it's, it's really terrible for images that are properly exposed. Really only a preset to fix those underexposed shots. Some of these presets not only have basic and tone adjustments, but they also have hue adjustments that I've created to bring some of those colors back in specific types of images. Like the Wild Carrots preset gives a huge pump of green and it's great for vegetables like in this shot of wild carrots or this shot of squash. But there is also the Insulata preset which is similar but with HSL pumps that work best for salads like this shot or even this shot with this huge corner of green tomatoes. The Mint Julep preset works great for photos with green backgrounds. You know, another preset that accentuates green. I kind of skipped over the French vignette preset here, which is actually one of my favorites to use. It works great for images where the subject is dead center, you know, giving that punchy film look and that nice vignette that drives the viewer's eyes back to the main dish. 
But you know, be careful using it on images like on this one where the food bleeds out on the corners. If you shoot a lot of cookies or breads and the dough ends up looking washed out and colorless, then you'll love the milk and cookies preset. This image of these chocolate chip cookies, the cookies are almost the same color as the background, but this preset brings back that warmth in the dough really well. And the same thing on these raisin bars. They look all yummy again. And even shots with a darker background like these pommiers just brings that warm, golden, rich color back. The next six presets are kind of more on the artistic side rather than just correction type adjustments. These more speak to my personal style and they might be a preset that I would use right before I upload it to uh, Instagram or whatever. The Steak Knives preset brings in a subtle fade in the shadow areas and a bit of contrast in the highlights. It also brings a little cooler tones to the image. Something for when I don't want to get too heavy on the style, like say in this tenderloin with chimichurri sauce image. It brightens up the shadows but also knocks down the contrast a bit in the shadows, giving it kind of a sleek feel to the image. You can see it again in this plantain and poached eggs image. Again, it's not too over the top but it's there. Then we have the tuna steak, which pumps in a lot of red. It looks awful on this plantain image, but on an image where meat is involved, it really highlights those meaty colors, like say back in this tenderloin image, or on this tuna steak image I have here. Meat can end up looking a little gray, so this preset really brings back the proper colors. I'll move over to the chicken and biscuits image and show you what the chicken and biscuit preset does. This image has a lot of browns and oranges in it, uh, just like this image of the soup or even this duck image, this preset really pumps those colors, making them a little deeper and richer. At the same time, it makes the opposite colors a little lighter. The clam chowder preset is similar, but you know, less on the color and adds a bit more of a medium fade to the shadows. It works great on a variety of images where you want more of that vintage film look. Another film look is the faded pommiers, like the milk and cookies preset, but with that classic film fade look, giving your images more of that vintage feel. It looks great on these raisin bars, and if I wanted to, I could keep the fade, but later go in and accentuate the browns to have the best of both of these presets. Faux gras brings the richness of the meaty colors back, but with a fade as well. This is probably one of my favorite presets because it is so versatile, and it works with so many different types of images. If you want just that awesome film-like fade to your images, but without a bump in colors, the last preset, the Morning Amaranth, is great for that. I, I would keep it off of darker images, but use it on pretty much any other type of image like these meat pies, or even this butternut squash image. This preset adds that film-like style that I just really love. All right, well, that is the Lightroom preset pack. There's 15 in all that come with the course, but five of them you can get for free right now over on the blog, right over there. <laughs> Actually, the link is in the description. It's weetogether.com, and you can download them and then upload them into Lightroom, test them out on your own photos, see how they work in your uh, workflow. I think you're gonna love them. And hey, while you're there, check out my new course that just dropped, the Lightroom for Food Photographers course. Use the promo code, don't forget about the discount code, FOOD25, that's F-O-O-D, all caps, the number 25, smash it together and you get 25% off your purchase. And it can't be better than that. And if you don't wanna use it, then don't use it. But I think you should. And that's it for this video. Give it a subscribe, a like, a thumbs up, a comment in the description so we can have a chat, and I'll see you in the next one.